fire was intense. Um, it came very quickly. Uh, it came with a violence. I can't describe it any other way. It was, it was a violent event. Um, the world shattered. Uh, the wind was 30 to 50 kilometers an hour with ember showers that were being driven from the mountain down into Trader's Cove and then at our firefighters. So as, as the spot fire started around the community, we tried to get the spot fires and then the structures began to get engulfed and we eventually just didn't have enough personnel on the ground and enough apparatus to be able to effectively continue fighting the fire. So we pulled back somewhat. Um, as the main fire blew through, we entered the community again to save houses from getting caught by their next houses that were already on fire. We have 13 members, including myself, that have lost houses. Um, the, everyone is still working. Um, they have worked from the very first moment that we were there. Um, the first shift was 22 hours. We then went back to the hall and were relieved by a second crew for the day shift and we came back that night um, and continued to fight fire. Everyone, to the one, has shown up on every shift that was scheduled. Um, during the first night we had two individuals that had minor injuries. One was burnt to the face. Um, he went to the hospital and um, the other was a broken wrist. They both called me immediately after being released from the hospital and said I want to be on the next shift. So that's kind of the way it's gone. Yeah, you're very calm for a guy who just lost his house. I don't have a choice. I've got to keep going. Um, one of our members that he was a chief in the past, um, her home burnt, and we were putting out the house of her next door neighbor, literally with the back of her house burning behind us. What about the close calls? We heard so many stories of firefighters right to the last minute. Sounds like that was you guys. We were down to the last minute. Um, we had, we stayed as long as we could. We have guidelines as to how long we can stay in the environment like that. Um, we, it was our neighborhood. We tried to do as much as we could. We stayed in there until it was literally no longer bearable or safe to be there. And then we pulled back and entered as soon as it died down a little bit. When you talk about uh, the rebuilding question, you're one of those guys. Yes. Now, you put yourself in those shoes. How, what's that feel like? I mean, you're still fighting the fire and you have to worry about all the other stuff. It's been a lot. Um, I've relied on my wife to do the stuff that I can't do because we're working 12s right now. Um, she's been taking care of the insurance company and talking with Mamas for Mamas to get our resources set up for the firefighters that have lost homes. We, I literally had my shorts at the fire hall. That was the only thing that I owned as far as clothing goes. So I can't say enough about Mamas for Mamas. They really came out. They, they've supported us with our personal items, our toiletries, our socks and underwear. You don't realize what you need until you realize you don't have it. So. Um, yeah, the community, I can't speak enough about the community. We've had so much outreach and so much support from everyone from Wilson's Landing and Traders Cove and even residents from Lake Okanagan Resort that have just come out and really tried to help as much as possible.